Hello students, and welcome to George Washington Speaks. I'm Tom Saffold. In our last edition, you learned how George Washington's ancestors were caught up in England's Civil War, and his great-grandfather first traveled to America on a business venture. George Washington, portrayed by Vern Frickholm, will now share why John Washington did not return to England as planned. Now, one story has it that my great-grandfather John and his crew came to the shore on the banks of the Pope Plantation, and that he was attended to by Colonel Pope's pretty young daughter, Anne, who he ended up marrying. But another story recounts that he actually met Colonel Pope while doing business in town and struck up a congenial relationship with him. Colonel Pope was taken by the young man and invited him to his plantation to join his family for a meal. The family was very welcoming to him, and through that association he met Ann Pope at age 24 and then married her. No matter which story you choose, that is how great-grandfather John came to the colonies and who he married. As a wedding gift, Colonel Pope graciously gave the couple some 700 acres of land on Mattox Creek next to the large, larger Pope Plantation. With that, he enthusiastically began his new life as a tobacco planter, and because of his hard work and ambitious nature, he became very successful in Westmoreland County, Virginia. The cultivation of tobacco as a very profitable crop was also a very labor-intensive effort. Initially, British indentured servants provided the necessary skills and labor, but as the number and size of plantations grew, larger workforces were needed. That led to the importation and purchase of African slaves to work the fields and raise the necessary kitchen crops to support the household and plantation workers. It was typical for many prominent plantation owners to become officers in the militia for the protection against the Indians, and great-grandfather John was no exception. Because of his business success and position in the community, he became a lieutenant colonel in the Virginia militia. He was also selected to be a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses and became a prominent politician in the colony. In 1661, at age 27, he was elected a vestryman in his church and was appointed coroner for the county. He also practiced law. In 1662, he was made justice of Westmoreland County Court. Two years later, the Appomattox Parish in Westmoreland County was changed to Washington Parish in his honor given his service to the county. When he was only 30 years old, he purchased 100 acres on the east side of Bridges Creek, close to its confluence with the Potomac River. It was there that he and Anne established their second home, known as the Bridges Creek Plantation. It was the first tract of land acquired by my grandfather John, and was the first of many transactions that would expand their plantation. John and his family lived and prospered, and there he developed his Tidewater Plantation and carried out many important duties for his king and for the colony. Great-grandfather John and Anne had five children, three of which lived to adulthood, Lawrence, John Jr., and Anne. His wife Anne died at the young age of 34, so John was left with three young children to raise. The following year, in 1671, at age 35, he married his second wife, Anne Brett. Anne had been married twice before, but both husbands had died, and then Anne died five years later after marrying John. Life was hard in the colonies, and death visited almost every family multiple times. They had no children. Two years after Anne Brett's death, John married a third time at age 42 to Francis Gerard, who had been married three times before 
and like Anne Brett, all three husbands had died. As you can see, life was difficult in the colonies and multiple marriages were common given the harsh conditions there. In 1674, he and his cousin, Nicholas Spencer, received a 5,000-acre land grant from Lord Thomas Culpepper, the proprietor of the Northern Neck region of Virginia. The wilderness acreage was on a peninsula that jutted out into the Potomac River and was bordered by Doag Run and Little Hunting Creek. After one year of marriage to Francis Gerard, John died in 1677 at age 43. They too had no children. Several years after great-grandfather John's death in 1690, the original land granted by Lord Culpepper was divided equally between the Washington and Spencer families. Lawrence's family received the eastern half of the land bordered by Little Hunting Creek, known as the Little Hunting Creek Plantation, and the Spencer family received the western part along the Doag River. In John Washington's short 43-year life, he went from being a minister's son to a poor fatherless boy with few prospects, but eventually became a respected Virginia colonist, owning thousands of acres of land. The opportunities which changed lives like John Washington's more than 300 years ago are still viewed as the American dream today. In our next episode, we'll learn more about the first American-born generation of Washingtons. <laughs>